Good morning, everyone. Thanks uh, for coming. And it's a you know, great pleasure for me to introduce Dr. Jun Zhu. So his first name is in Chinese, it should be Jun instead of Jun. But that's tough. One. <laughs> <laughs> that's tough. One. Yeah. Um, so I know Jun for a while, because I think of back in the time, 2003, we sort of interacted. And, he was trying to recruit me to work, to work at work at that time. So we get to know each other. I learned a lot about that in his research. And Dr. Um, Jin got his uh, uh, bachelor degree from the Tsinghua University, which is one of the best engineering and science university in China. The people say that's MIT of uh, China. And he, afterwards, he moved to the New York State University at Albany, finished a master's degree and a PhD degree in the biomedical science. Uh, after finishing the PhD, he stayed at the New York State. There is one research center, also was a Wasworth Center for the for, um, for laboratory and research. It's uh, supported by the State of Department of Health of New York State. And afterwards, uh, in 2002, uh, he moved to the imaging and working in the industry for about uh, how many years? Uh, until 2011, right? Yeah. And in 2011, he moved, he moved, moved to the Mount Sinai Hospital, and he is currently has the rank of the full professor and in the Department of the Genetics and the Institute of Genomics and Molecular Biology. And Jim's research is outstanding. He has a, you know about 60 um, publications, but most of them occurs in the you know high impact journals like the Nature, Nature Genetics, and and their group is one of the early ones which is a high Bayesian network and Bayesian causal uh, study in a large scale you know biological network learning and uh, their early work, but uh, the scale wise, I think that their group is a, is a sort of pioneering in the field, and so. He also, right now, he has uh, multiple numerous grants, uh, also I count them, so 10 grants right now, with some in GI, some are collaborative. One. And with that, I just want uh, to look forward to listening to your talk. I just want to learn more. All right. Oh, thanks. OK, thank you. Yeah, I, I just, uh, actually, I have really enjoyed my trip here and uh, yesterday and today. And yeah, very, very stimulating is the discussion. and. Uh, I, I think one thing I really want to get involved more because there's some part of the, the research we have try to do, but we're not really the experts, and the experts are here, and <laughs> we still want, there are a lot of things we want to learn from you guys. Um, so, is it, I was the job, is it, um, I don't know why that only is the, the screen. Oh, is it because of the Skype? The sky is not the part of 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 the 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 And then you move in your mouse. Is, is there any, is there, there's a card talk about that? Oh, great, great. <laughs> <laughs> How's he advancing? How's he advancing? Uh, just the arrow, I think. Just the arrow, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Great. yeah, so um, I think I will try to, it's, uh, from the talk, if you, you think you get, it's two concepts. It's, uh, so that, in the complex, it's the disease. There is uh, really there are a lot of things, and uh, so I want to get a two concepts. It's one is a causal. What we're trying to is uh, right. It's inference, causal inference. Here, I think that uh, is the center about, and uh, really it's uh, critical to do is causal, and uh, because uh, the biological is really complex, so there's a the why the integrative is the approach can help you to derive a truly a causal what we call is a biological causal. 
So there's the biological system, and uh, there's a lot of different approach to do. Is the biological, is a, is a network to the modeling. Really depend on the, it's the how much data do you have. Say if you have, it's a very, it's a small amount of data. It's a 30, 40, or maybe 100. Then all you can do probably is a correlation or is a linear regression. But if you have a thousand of uh, is a date point and plus uh, is a is a tempo, then you can do really is a kinetics modeling and uh, but the city in the between there is a is a probably is a causal model. Then it can be is a kind of intermediate is a is a requirement for data. But actually, it can handle is a large number of uh, nodes. It can it's capture really complex uh, relationship. So there's a lot of uh, provisions. Uh, it's a it's a causal model, and we we used uh, it's a Bayesian network because uh, they have a lot of things. And mainly, it's a uh, it's very, very flexible. You can it's a. Uh, Incorporate its a knowledge into its vision network as a prior, and uh, at end it's now only give you its a uh, its simple association or simple its a uh, causal relationship. It's also you can infer based on network. It was exactly its a mechanism. Which one is a cookie? Is a is a key regulator? What uh, is a key mechanism? And actually, there also it could be using its a that as a predict model, and uh, there's a um, where it kind of a still lack of uh, this arm, but actually it's a center here. It's it's a fast on this one. I think uh, that we, I want to is to learn more is uh, from this. Arm. So our is a uh, work mainly concentrate on how to is uh, this knowledge from this knowledge, and we can derive the mechanism and what's the normal mechanism. Because we can derive. So generally, it's a, there's a lot of generally what we do is have we have a lot of it's a omics data very very diverse. It's, so it could be it's a measure it's a gene expression and protein and uh, what have omic and also what's the genetic and genomic and also we have uh, it's the knowledge and actually in public it's the database what it's a uh, in some People's mind, the biology, and it's a drawn, it's a, it's a abstract diagram. But I think really, it's a, to do that, it's a, we not only build up it's a police uh, graphic model. We really want to build it's a, it's a biological causal model. So I think it's a, all from there. We want to is emphasize is the dirt. Very very different is a concept. It's a, what's the association and the causality, and if a, if a biomarker, maybe you don't really care. It's a, what's the distinct, but as long as the, it can predict what's the outcome, it's fine. But if based on the outcome you design its perturbation, or design drug, or design therapy, then you may get a completely different result. For example, this uh, is the doctor is the told him there's a strong association between his fat master and fat dog. And if based on the association you do is uh, get the dog train hard and then see what the result. Actually this this one is is not isolated its problem. You you maybe love that that is so obvious. But actually this one is the billions, billions of dollar is question. So what what's the association and uh, and causality? So for for a long time, people is uh, identified this uh, association from epidemiology study. This one is a couple. It's a, it's a almost a twenty thousand people, and they identify it's a association between it's a coronary heart disease and HDL. And uh, this one result is cut, is a replicate multiple times. So this what association, and the people there are a lot of hypotheses. Is it was potential mechanism, and uh, then is the uh, 
for 20 years is the multiple, multiple is pharmaceutical company is the develop drug. Say, I want to re raise the FGL and hope it's the decrease the it's called the artery disease and the huge market. So multiple company develop this drug and you can raise it's FGL is uh, 50% or over 100%. Great. And uh, what's the result at the end? So we then have a different uh, control. Generally, you have it's a, it's a different drug. And uh, what is um, it's a kind of standard is uh, it's that in that the lower you is a, it's a, Lower density is uh, lipid, so LDL and uh, the different uh, fibrate and the nicing that no, it can recently be FGL, but not very, very effective. But then this uh, CPT that one is controlled in high density is uh, lipid protein, and uh, if you use that, it uh, will show it's very, very effective. But you see what the, is the benefit to the to the patient? Are they is a lower the risk for uh, coronary artery disease or other comorbidity? And so this one actually not is very effective, but they do have some its benefit. But for this one, actually they kill the patient. So there's a there there still is people is. Uh, Kind of debating whether this uh, is a compound effect or it's actually it's a mechanism effect. So the first one is uh, is uh, as a Pfizer, they spend the two billion is the dollar to get into phase three clinical trial and end up they have uh, it's high is uh, adverse effect, so they drop. But the last week and the Lily also is dropped the uh, the. The clinical trial also they spend two billion dollars um, on that phase three trial, so th that's really is a different is a quite different. If it's just pure based on the association and the develop the drug, then you probably end up this one. So that's why it's a pharmaceutical company or why the whole is a healthcare system very so expensive because the, to develop one drug. Doing the clinical trial or preclinical trial is billion, billion dollars. And end up if you don't have a clear is the mechanism and you're going to fail. So it's, uh, I'm not going to discuss is why it's a, it's a fail because a lot of uh, it's a preclinical model they're doing on, on it's, uh, mice and actually it's the it's a mouse. Don't have FGL is endogenously, and you can is uh, doing transgenic, but the whole system is uh, different. What we found actually we studying is the swine, the pig actually very very similar to to human, and they have endogenous uh, FGL. If you raise the FGL in in pig, actually have then all these uh, comorbidity, hypertension, and the psychological is the disease actually is. It's happened there. So there's the definitely is a is a mechanism where there's some is a other is the scenario. There's a lot of things. What's the causal? What's the uh, is the biological? It's a model to study the disease. But uh, really, it's a lot of things. Is actually for if it's pure based on association and end up is the make up the is the large cause and and. Finally, lead to that end. So, <laughs> I think really what we want to is see how we can distinguish what the association and the causality. So, a lot of things is the experiment what we measure is the kind of a correlation. So, like it's a gene pressure, we can simultaneously is measure is the. It's 40,000 is the transcript level, and uh, if you measure 100 is a, is a patient or 100 sample, then you are going to pick up a lot of this uh, correlation. So this 3G, there is the gene pattern correlate together. And uh, then one question is, the, are there is the causal relationship between them, or there's a, maybe it's a, definitely there could be other, it's a hidden variable regulated 3. So one question is, the, 
can we is the draw there is a causal relationship in this way or maybe it's the other way so it's really it's a red regulate the other was blue regulate the other or maybe it's the <coughs> that's the two regulate simultaneous regulate these things so there are a lot of uh, configuration you can think about what draw and uh, so then how we can is the distinguish which one is the truly is a biological is the is the regulation and uh, it's represent this one or maybe it's the uh, our data biological is the observation cannot distinguish some of them so from here that uh, if we can do it based on the observation, we can do it using is a Bayesian network to select. Generally, is that we can consider this one is a uh, as a model selection problem for the very, very simple is the case, right? We can is the enumerate all the possible configuration. Then we can test the given the data and what uh, most likely most likely is the structure and also maybe also consider the complexity of that model so anyway based on the it's a data then we consider this one is the best model and as a Bayesian network you can have this arrow is the direct graph you think this is a causal relationship but actually there's a a group of the structure, not one structure, but group of structure, even though they have a different, say, this one causal relationship, actually they feed the data is equally well. So generally, it's the, it's, we call this one as a group, as a class, as a Markov equivalent, because mathematically, based on the, on the data, we cannot distinguish which one is a, is a better and they end up give you the exactly same as the probability. But if you look at this one, actually the causal relationship is uh, it's the reverse. So even though we say, think about the efficient network is a causal model, but actually a lot of cases, they cannot really give you is a causal, it's a, it's a defined causal relationship. But then this question is the, how given this one is the, we want to really want to use in the Bayesian network to is a capture is the it's a causal relationship then how we can make many questions is how we can break this uh, Markov equivalent based on other type of data so what we start is the it's the animal model and this one is the we call it the F2 is cross Generally, what is the star is to have a it's a it's a parent string. They have a different phenotype, but uh, they have a pure genetic background. There is a difference, but then you intercross them together and uh, see they got intermediate phenotype. But then you you further cross them, made them together, brother and sister, and then you can where it's a mosaic, it's a genetic background. And also phenotype background, they have a very, very diverse. And it could be a body stream, it's like this one, it could be fat or like a leaf, but then some of them have a gradient. So from there, then we can see all the difference is the, is the genetics because the experiment that we can control all these confounding factor eliminate the, is, the, is the age and the diet, the room temperature, <coughs> and everything then we can uh, say what the uh, potential is the information flow so this one is central uh, is a genetic we know is the is the information can flow only one direction that have uh, is the genotype and this the genotype is the will create some is the change in the gene expression or protein function and then is the protein function well, is the change sum of the is the disease phenotype. So what we want to is to see is the better have a different type of this model. So for example, is the if we have a is the is the is the lacking is the is the change and say then they have a lacking is the level change then it's a lead to obesity. 
So this model, but also could be it's a uh, leptin is just pure response to obesity. For example, if the leptin receptor have variation, it causes obesity, and the leptin is not actually it's a causal for the for the obesity, but actually it's a result of the obesity. So based on this one, we, we can it's a test. See what the, it's a different model for either it's a phenotype and the specific gene expression change are is the is the independent. For example, that the the mouse is a is skin color and obviously actually they're kind of uh, even though they're is highly associated, but actually they're is uh, independent. So what we is the develop so. Rather than is to have uh, is the Markov equivalent structure, we know that information can flow only one direction, and uh, then this Markov equivalent structure, if you know that uh, it's a one is the genetic node or it's a strong regulate a genetic node, then we can is uh, distinguish. Let's say, for example, this one is the genetic node. And the genotype information has to be flow out from here. Well, they have a it's a strong it's a genetic control that say this one has to be is a genetic information flow from one from here to here. Then all the other is a really is a is structure in the same is a Markov equivalent structure. It's now fit is the biological is the scenario. Then we can select that. Only one of these the structure is exists based on the is the biological is the biological knowledge and more equivalent actually is the genetic structure. When you inject the genetic structure, then help you to break is the Markov equivalent. So then from here is the, rather than is the ambiguous causal relationship here and from here then we can is the define exactly what the, is the association, why they have association, because they have a causal structure like this one. So to represent this one, we can actually, it's a, it's a simple, rather than it's a fake on uh, these three, three, we can do it's a very, it, it's a complex model. So. Instead of we say this one is the this node, one of these nodes is the is the cis regulated and have only have to be at the root node. Actually, it come is the situation can be it's a it's it's more it's a complex. So rather than so in this case, it's very simple. It's the all have a it's a uh, genotype and uh, this one the gene expression is strong regulated by the genotype. And then they have a different it's a scenario that still have a it's a it's a causal and for it's a complex model it's like like this one so that uh, you can it's a still in that some of the case you can do it's a it's a causal causality test or causal inference but there are a lot of things is uh, for this pair of relationship. They both regulate by the genetic strong regulation. Then how we can is uh, orange there is the uh, order there is the causal effect. See whether it's a green is causal is a it's red or red is called it's a change for the green. Then there's several that we can do either it's a condition of this genotype is a signal is change. Or a condition of this genotype and change, but uh, definitely you're going to get a completely different result and some of the in the middle, right? And uh, because uh, you can base on each is the low side and uh, it's make a causal test, then you have to it's aggregate and sometimes it's aggregation is very is uh, it's difficult, and but some other way you can see was the uh, if this uh, is a scenario, then it's a green node. It will have a different complexity of the genetic regulation, and the red node and only regulate by one genetic, so only have one genetic. For it's a signal here, but the it's green node will have a two, 
uh, work by further if this one is a it's a green node directly the red node then it's a, you can it's a little bit different so the red node and blue node have a more it's complex genetic regulation and the green node have very very simple so some of this one it help you to is uh, to it's uh, order this uh, causal relationship but more is a uh, it's a uh, lot of one is it's not black and white, so we can use in some is uh, the probability model. So keep is the uh, direction x is uh, say I prefer is uh, a regular b or is the b regular is uh, eighty percent or is the uh, twenty percent or maybe it's uh, just exactly the same. So we can is uh, represent as pair relationship is more likely to be causal or more likely to be is independent. Give it some probability. Then we can integrate this one is like an edge weight voice is the structure is a prior to a network. Then we can reconstruct that vision network is now just a is the directed graph, but more have a biological it's a causal information. So we is uh, rather than is the testing is on a lot of the different mice and is the experiment. So we. This some is the cheaper way. We is uh, experimentally is simulate some is the F2 cross, then simulate is the observation, and then is the based on this data, can we is the reconstruct of of the, the network and uh, see what you have a genetics the component will have a sample variation, what the the accuracy of your network. So we can construct the because the underlying the network is known. Then based on the reconstruct, then we can see what the uh, precision and what the recall. So based on this graph, it's a dramatic effect is sample effect. So if you have a large number of sample, then you could have a it's highly highly it's accurate network. But if you is a drop into is the about uh, is uh, 100 or 200 the range, then the network accuracy drop is very, very fast. But interesting at that time, if we have a genetic component, and uh, so this dot is the uh, dash line, if say if you just do using genetic as a prior, you're going to get this accuracy. But if you're using a genetic as a prior, then it's going to significant is the improve. Your accuracy, but that improvement is uh, diminished when you have a larger sample size. So, what the other, other way? You, if you only care about uh, um, the the difference between is the genetics with non genetics, which one is the number give you the highest return if you inject the genetics? Was say, I want to design experiment. I want to do it. Uh, as little as a small number as possible, then the best one you can say will be going to get uh, it's a 200 is between 200 or 300, and one they have a genetic they're going to significantly improve. So that one is really it's kind of a, it's fundamental is uh, assumption for most of our crops. So all animal model, most of animal is, uh, model experiment is around the 250. So that's one, and I think that a lot of uh, it's the biological system is a, we say it's a complex. So one thing is the one that emphasize the causal, and another thing is the when you have additional data, it's help uh, to is uh, define what really is the uh, that is the causal was a static association versus the biological causal. So instead of only it's integrated the genetics, lots of other information you can integrate that, and eventually it help you to is uh, refine the structure, not only refine the causal structure, but also maybe give you is more is a biological inside that. But uh, so when we do is the integration, actually it's not really that trivial. There are a lot of different things. Uh, one thing I didn't talk about is the when you put a different domain of this OMIS data, actually there are a lot of a lot of error like a TCGA 
and you have uh, it's the gene expression, genetics, and the methylation. Actually, there are a lot of uh, samples don't match, and uh, so we have is the uh, one paper only out on uh, cross competition biology, but also we have is the uh, it's uh, another manuscript ready. So a systematic uh, curate on, on the TCGA, we found a lot of error. If you can correct error, that dramatically improves error. But on the other hand, if you assume everything data is correct, and uh, generally pull them together, it's uh, not going to enhance your signal. It's always going to dilute your signal because it's a different domain. And uh, so, <laughs> that, that, that's true, it's a consider, right? It's, uh, you have a complete different dimension and people pulling it on different uh, different uh, direction. Why you think you're going to end up is the more, it's, uh, it's to say, it's, the, it's a better decision or it's a better model. And always it's drawn to some, it's a compromise. So, I think is the when you is put the is the different uh, data, then you really have to ask your question: what underlying the mechanism? Why is the type of data have to work together? And under what is the circumstance they work together? Well, which part of the data that work together? So, for example, this one is the yeast. We can have uh, is the gene expression. And we can have a protein body interaction. We'll have all these uh, relationships you can extract from the literature. Then you can ask yourself, you say, all these uh, literature related to interaction or protein body interaction, do they really is uh, correlated? Actually, we see there is a, a little bit better than the random. So the yellow is the red line is all possible pair. Then we see mo most of them don't, don't correlate. Eh? And uh, but if you compare all the possible is body body interaction or as literature, they may be better than the than the random, but they're still actually pretty random. Majority of them they at the genetic level they don't co they don't co-regulate it. Then the question is how we can find information here and enrich that, and uh, rather than is the using the data going to is the is the loop. And uh, we say, can we, based on the structure itself, give you some a hint? And uh, so there's a, some, it's a question is the, why they're not correlated because the, the environment, the experimental procedure could be very, very noisy. So instead of if we consider each of these edge, so we want to see are there is the collaborate is the information. So we don't believe this act uh, unless there's another node they is all fine together. So we really find the collaborative information and say so if we find this uh, click structure and then we is the trust this one it truly is interact. But there's the experimental approach. There's a one thing is uh, we we deal with a uh, false positive here. So we using other information to collaborate this information. But also they have a high false negative rate. So how we can deal with that? Then instead of doing is a complete click, we can it's a synthetic search partial click. So even though for this one say is the rather than is a form of five click, but there are a lot of is the miss missing edge. There could be is a biological is a experimental approach don't cover this relationship. So there's a it's a systematic way you, you can search all these possible, then you see which, how large of this uh, partial click and how com complete of this uh, partial click you can is expect from the data is a better, better than random. Then we select this the click and say this one is from this large click and more likely to be is a they truly is the interact together when they form the stable is a compact then it's more likely to be it's co-regulated by some is a transcription factor. So if we can it's a, it's track from this information and then then we can using is a, <coughs> this information to design a prior. So what we call is a it's a skill free prior. 
generally say if this complex is the small, then we say this the transcription effect is the is the effect is small. If you really have a large complex, stable complex, there has to be it's a strong it's transcription regulation. So that is a, basically what the prior is a, if they have a, a transcription factor regulate this one, then will give you it's the add it's a higher weight. And that way it really depends on how many is the downstream is the target. So with systematic using that one, it's a using O it's the East model because the one thing is that a lot of uh, genetics is very easy to manipulate <coughs> and uh, very it's easy to generate a large amount of the expression data. And more importantly, a lot of this polypoly uh, interaction is the uh, well, literature based uh, database is kind of complete for the for the East, and also it's uh, all, almost all the transcription factor is uh, it's a no for the, and also what the binding side was the downstream part. So we're using this one as kind of uh, as a proof concept. The system say given the best scenario, almost all complete data. It's a, can you derive a good it's a network and also it's a gain some it's a not recapitulate all the knowledge but can you is it derive is a normal information so the first one is a, that's true when you is integrate uh, all this uh, data the first question is uh, really is the is the integration of this uh, different uh, type of data or different prior, different way to generate prior, are they truly help you or not? And, uh, and how much is going to help you? So instead of we can uh, generate the, is the patient network pure based on gene expression data without any prior, or we can use it, the only genetic prior to help you is the arrange part of this, the, this the causal relationship or you can have all everything everything you know is a structure it was the it's a genetic causal it's a prior and also it's the it's a transcription prior or it's protein protein interaction prior. So when we see well, then we can compare that with the experimental data that's a it's a no call compendium. So there's the you know how each individual gene then you measure the transcription response. And then you can predict from the network, say, if you preserve this gene and uh, what the neighborhood of gene go to respond, are there this the network predict the change and the genetic the experimental change, are they is the overlap or is just a simple by feature exact test? So are they is truly is the overlap or is the complete random? So if you compare is the patient network is predict so there's totally about 280 knockout the uh, data and uh, about one third of this one it can is captured by the patient network without any prior but if you give it the more prior then definitely you're going to capture is a more is the this the knockout it's the experiment will fit better for that independent data set and the other one is the, is the biological is the association either capture some its pathway that always the, you, you what you have is the strong prior and get this one is the biological pathway is is represent more in this the complex or comprehensive network. But this one definitely also is a transcription factor, binding style transcription factor and perturbation. But this one could be a little bit loop. Could you explain what the numerical increase are? 125 watts. Uh, 125 knockout. So this one total knockout is about 280. Okay. So the maximum is the 280, and we will only capture it's about a, a little bit more than a third. And uh, are the maximum and the other columns what? Um, so this one is the maximum is could be a, about 75, so it captured majority of them. And uh, this one is uh, about 150 and the transcription strong transcription factor. But this one is, uh, even though we say that definitely get captured a lot more than we saw prior, but consider that uh, it can be a little bit loop. 
because the, we're already using some of these transcription factor binding site as a prior here. So it's not a surprise you get some more information there. But this one is all it's a retro is a retrospect experiment because uh, anything is no here, but uh, you can this question is the some also it's a loop. So definitely it can it uh, it's matched uh, it uh, it's the uh, existing knowledge well, but main question is the can you predict anything new? Right, so what we what we did is the, there have some is the genetic structure of a genetic perturbation, it's the it's the genetic one perturbation and regularly a lot of lot of genes respond. So we call that the is the EQT hotspot. So the question is the, what exactly is the gene, causal gene under that uh, QTL hotspot? Can we is uh, predict that and can we perturb that and really represent uh, the biological system? So we there's a is a one QTL hotspot here. Then we we is uh, infer that actually it's not one gene. Maybe actually it's multiple. It's causal gene there. So we perturb is a two is gene. If they would think it's a kind of cis regulated causal gene, one is the uh, it's the IL it's a V six and the other one is LU two. They're biologically they're it's uh, related, and then what we perturb is the the what the, is the change actually the local network that exactly kind of match is the is the network. Um, in the global network. So in generally, if we look at this, uh, it's the local network around this one and see everything is the gene signature and most of perturbation signature actually is concentrated here. So we can calculate is uh, is the enrichment and I guess it's uh, it really is a significant uh, it's a p value so not surprising. But also is that another is the knockout is the that here also have the, it's the effect when if you look at the local structure for the patient here and the signature uh, and also a significant rate. So from one point of view is the uh, right you can predict what the normal things and uh, really is a match what your prediction and but if you go to it's a one step further right so it's a qualitative match but uh, did they tell you what the mechanism so we dig a little bit more on this one. So this one that the local structure there is a LU2 that gene we perturb and with the P regulator. And it is the, it's the right node, uh, it's a signature, it's a, in the signature, but also it have it's one specific transcription expanding site. So it's likely to all these response have go through this uh, transcription factor is the uh, is uh, modulation. Then question is, do we see that transcription is a chain response to that, or in, in the in the data itself, are there any hint that transcription factor actually involved in this uh, in this uh, network regulation? But actually no. So if you look at this one, it's a uh, it's perturbation change really large. So this one is log two. So they have uh, it's uh, more than it's a tenfold is the difference. But if you look at transcription factor itself, actually it's a gene fraction level don't change at all. It's very very small. It's variation. So then this question is uh, why is it this network? Is it everything this uh, change go to that have that transcription factor and. Uh, so one hypothesis is that it's a protein level chain, even though transcription factor, it's a gene person don't change. So actually, we, there's a, it's a, another group. It's a, at the same time we did it's a, it's a gene person is profiling another group systematic doing the same. It's a strain on the proteomic, so they measure all these uh, six thousand. Uh, Genes protein level, 
And uh, we kind of correlated that there actually there's a lot of issues that don't correlate. It. But we look at very specifically, are uh, there is any is hint of this transcription factor, their putting level chain. Actually, the similar, very, very similar, there's no it's a variation in the putting level at all. So it kind of uh, is a puzzle, we say, are there truly is uh, all these regulation go to go through this transcription is a factor. And so instead of doing it uh, systematic polyomic and we say it's cannot explain by the polyomic. So we say goofy other is a, is a small metabolite may contribute this uh, is a modulation. So then we say the, the it's a metabolic profiling and then see whether we can give you some hint. So that one is a systematic we can is a put all these layers together. The only thing is that there are a lot of uh, know about its biochemistry pathway, then we can encode that the biochemistry pathway here. So this is what where it's uh, similar to that genetic uh, its regulation to the gene expression level. So the, the same that you have the different genotype that multiply have also a high abundance and lower abundance. If this uh, correspond to the genotype difference, then we say that uh, it's the same a genetic regulation is not only <coughs> gene expression, but also it's a metabolite. So we can systematically really put them together. And uh, so this one is uh, that generally how you can, based on this, uh, is the CAF database uh, kind of uh, derive some of the prior, really see this enzyme and the metabolite, how far they are, and two metabolite, how far away from this uh, complete, it's about chemistry, is a reaction. But again, so there's say the one metabolite in the biochemistry pathway was uh, is a loop two and uh, it's the other is a loop three is here. So one metabolite is the strong is the genetic control exactly is the same genetic control regular loop two, but also regularly these uh, two isopropyl myelate that's a metabolite. But if it there is pulled into is the global is the Network actually will find actually this metabolite sit in the middle and uh, roughly all these uh, right nodes that have uh, is a transcription is a transcription factor binding site. So you have a hypothesis is the, the transcription factor is the really is better represented by this by this metabolite. Then question why? And actually there's the People have done this work a long time ago and say this uh, activity actually is uh, modulated by exactly this. Uh, it's uh, by that time it's to call it alpha isoprogramatic one, we call it two isoprogramatic. It's actually the same metabolite. When you bind this one, it can modulate its on and off that activity. But the other one is uh, regulated by. Activity by the transcription level, but from our data, we see it's not there. So if it from there completes its uh, network, then you can really understand why our net is uh, our data from this genotype regulate the activity of this enzyme and uh, modulate all these uh, downstream rather than it uh, go through the activity, but activity is completely regulated by this. Uh, it's a small metabolite. So one question is that, yeah, you have a lot of uh, this network you can do, and the question is uh, really is the have is the noble insight you can derive what anything is new. So there's a, we have is a several it's based on network with identify several is quality to a diabetes obesity that we have systematic is the one is a it's a ten is a gene is a we we propose and they actually look at the network and we generate the mouse model and most of them they have a, it's a phenotype and also there's now causal not only is about is ten actually it could, could be it's a it's a couple hundred so that's why it's not surprised they say now the in the system in the network they all kind of connected together and they all have some effect. But the question is uh, which one have a larger effect. And uh, we have it's, uh, that lot of things we how 
based on this the whole network, how we can choose the best uh, is a target to work on. But um, yeah, maybe I'll skip uh, this view that uh, this one is generally is uh, based on really is uh, association that the GWAS then a lot of gene in the GWA region, how we can use our network to really identify the true causal, it's a, it's a true causal gene and doing some is the neural count. And so there's a lot of the data biology is complex. So there are a lot of uh, layer. That's why it's the in integration is help you to is understand what the true underlying biological system so that's why integration is uh, is is key there. But uh, the question is how you do the integration. A lot of people you can do different way. You have how this uh, methylation signature overlap with the gene expression signature, just using one diagram. But the, what we what we will do is the more more is the mechanism based. What the can we is the derived is uh, its mechanism is a graph and represent in global is a structure. So really, what want to is the uh, is jump is the biological system is complex. It complex not only on genetic background and environment, but also it's a dynamic. Its feature have a it's a time domain. How we can is really is integrate the uh, both dimension is genetic and temporal is the effect. So most of what we have done is causal and uh, lot of people have done on uh, this one is a time to its dimension it can be either it's a Gwanger Kosaki on the time. And a kind of a lack is the so if we have a both, this is the genetic perturbation and this the time domain, if I have have a both this domain, how we can uh, simultaneously leverage this uh, dimension get integrated is the uh, causality test, not just the uh, genetic causal, not the uh, Granger causality test, but the uh, genetics uh, is temple is a uh, causality test. So we generate this experiment in genetic perturbation and then we preserve as uh, one compound and uh, measure is uh, all these uh, hundred uh, is the uh, segregate at the multiple time point. So how we can is the derive that simultaneously derive what the genetics components regulate this uh, temporal response. So we just model that uh, is uh, to have a genetics and uh, model what the time response curve and then it's truly it's question is uh, what you have the mainly a difference the tricky point is uh, each time point actually they are not independent. So how we can uh, capture is a coherent structure from its time point to time point, and actually that make is a big difference when we is uh, have uh, is a genetic association. So genetic association really is have uh, is uh, here uh, have uh, genetics parameters. Uh, all these uh, beta represent different uh, genetics and the time. And if we can fit the model, that really is the question is, uh, are there is the, all these uh, genetic uh, variable, genetic related variable, are the same? That means there's no genetic is uh, different, but anything is the different, that means have uh, is the genetic regulation. So that's, uh, so there's a true is the question actually is how we capture the coherence between its time point to time point. If we say there's uh, there's no genetic control, the no covariant, then it's the row is zero, then it's the all time point is independent. So we can see as how if you simulate the data, then recapture is a genetic variation. Then we can see that uh, they have a it's a different. Then if you have it's a, truly they have a, it's a covariant between the time point. If you it's model that uh, coherent, definitely you can get it's the best uh, best result. But if it's just a pure regression base, completely ignore that the coherent structure, then it's perform worse. But uh, any anyway, the all is much better. You consider each individual time point individually. The all the regression is perform better than consider one by one. But if they have a, it's a truly, it's a, 
structure is independent or have very small, then this one better is the model is a covariant structure or regression that give you the exactly the same result. So that's not a surprise. So at least one, so this one that means it's a, if you can infer the covariant structure model that it's always going to have very, very robust, whether or not they have a, it's a covariant structure between it's a time point. So one is uh, you have is uh, temporal genetic uh, association, but then we have all these uh, similar. Can we is uh, now based on the association? Can you derive its uh, causality path? So that similar like uh, all these three nodes, you can have a different relationship, and then we can similar doing the the causality <coughs> path, but uh, simultaneously using its uh, genetic. And uh, and uh, it's a time time effect. So then, really, it's uh, you can select this one. It's a uh, rather it's similar to is uh, Granger causality using the auto correlation, auto regression, and then it's a plus uh, a different variable. Are they going to give you the better fit or not? So we apply that uh, it's East experiment. And then we can see using the different model, is it can be identified as the QTL, and also how is the is the refined that QTL I can identify whether you have a large is a competent interval region or have really refined small competent region. So that the regression model based will either consider the covariance or not covariance, and they all have very very is the small competent level and see that uh, if they are peak, they are really it's narrow. But uh, statistically, they have kind of a little bit uh, less is uh, QTL is identified by the, the different is the consider is the individual consider individual time form. But key is uh, um, so they have a different uh, is the QTL and they have a different uh, is the peak and so it truly is a uh, one thing is uh, when you have this uh, it's a QTR hotspot, you, you want to it's compare whether that QTR hotspot relate to the drug treatment, and so whether that signature is the uh, overlap the drug signature chain. Actually, if you look at uh, this uh, this model, actually most of this one is uh, we identify is uh, by time dependent QTL. They all is overlap with the drug signature very well. But others, uh, that's a, it's a little bit less. But key question is, is uh, if you look at uh, it's a uh, you have causality and you look at what the key is causal driver under that uh, it's a low side and uh, predict that can can you it's uh, validate that and uh, you can maybe ask but why they work there. So this one is uh, there's the key right. It's a peak or hotspot. Really, it's a unique identified by is uh, our is a temple genetic association model, and so we predict uh, it's three. So this one is the highest uh, is a competent causal regulator, and so then we perturb this one in is the two conditions. So we can compare the wild type of knockout without drug treatment, and then compare what's the difference between is the drug treatment. So if you look at uh, it's a temporal genetic it's, it's a QTL, I actually find it last peak here, and uh, this cis regulated, but also a last peak here, it's trans regulated. But if it without any drug treatment, 
uh, signature is very, very small, but the significance is actually overlap here. That's, that's why it's a, it doing the static is a model, we don't find that the EQTR hotspot, but only it's uh, happened in the drug treatment. But if you look at drug treatment, then the signature overlap both of the, the QTR hotspot significantly. So what is the representative is the if it contract the signature is the with the with the drug treatment or without, then it's the overlap is the several of these the QTR hotspot. But mainly this one that the, where where the gene located and uh, so it's uh, when you result a drug treatment signature is small, but it's still it's overlap here. But this one is that transitive, so that's kind of the feedback control. When you have perturbed there and they involve a lot of things, it's actually it's regulated by other things. But if you look at global structure, then it's thing it's not surprise. So actually there's a, in the middle there's a group of genes commonly regulated by it's a lot of this uh, QTL. And if we perturb this gene as our curve, and then definitely this group of them have a response. But also it's a kind of feedback and part of this network also perturb. So this one that, that is trans is a QTL hotspot. So that's not surprise. This one is a response variable. Well. So so there's a definitely is a, is a part of it. Yeah, so that uh, the larger system always have uh, feedback control, and uh, so this one actually is the represent uh, that feedback control. So this one um, is the strong genetics that this one regulate all the other, and eventually it's regulate this one. But they have it uh, under different condition. If perturb this one, then it's feedback control also a lot of other all these pathway. So. To it's really it's capture this one to identify this response. Actually, you have to really get without it's a type of or drug treatment. You're not going to find this response. And the only thing you can identify, only way to identify it really is the cause is the from is the dynamic is the system or is the temporal genetic re regulation. So uh, just a uh, lot of this work is the uh, is the genetic temple is the. Uh, Work we have, we have is a paper under review. We have a, it's a published, and uh, but I think that's really kind of thing I want to is work is with you guys further a lot of the because the, there are a lot of work need to be done. I think this one is more and more to represent is uh, the model. It can represent uh, its underlying biological better is feedback control and dynamic chain. So I will just uh, stop here. And so the question, the, the work is that uh, we have a lot of uh, collaborator and uh, a lot of East work actually is uh, collaboration with uh, Richard Bram at the Berkeley and uh, Leo Kuliak at Princeton and uh, Bob Gunner at, uh, at uh, UW. And uh, most of Temple is uh, Kozak, he work is uh, it's uh, by it's Luan, but unfortunately she left and joined the FDA. And, uh, but we still have to try to finish that work. And also there's a, it's a multiple it's a support from it's a different sources. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Question? Sure. Yeah. Could you? Give a little more detail, maybe use the whiteboard if you need to, uh, about how you do your dynamic analysis. So, you said you use range of causality. Um, so, it's a uh, causality. So, what we is if there's a two, uh, it's a model, it's a we, we, if we will concentrate on this one, we have uh, more data, and uh, so this one is the uh, uh, phase one and uh, phase two 
actually it's represent the genetic. So if you have a standard, it's a genetic, it's standard, it's a formal quality, then you only have one beta. So uh, I'm sorry, I'm having a little trouble reading the indices. Perhaps you could uh, give me uh, a little more interpretation. Uh, am I doing a Markov one, that is to say, the lags depend just on one previous time step, or do I have multiple time steps? Dependent? Yeah, so if we just uh, using it's a one step. So, so if we're using the first order, it's the first order. So that one you have, it's, uh, it's and, a, and do you do you take account of contemporaneous relations? Uh, or not. So Granger and econometricians yeah. generally, uh, when when they do these, essentially these are regressions. Uh, they uh, pre-multiply, or graphically, they introduce a uh, simultaneous or you might contemporaneous relation amongst the variables as well. Uh, um, do you or do you not? We do not. And uh, so we do it uh, other than um, this the uh, Genetics or, or time delay, we, we don't capture other information. So do you ever look at the relations amongst the residuals after you do your brain or analysis? Um, then it's a uh, general the residue that still depend on the time or still depend on genetics? No, the residuals won't depend on the time, but they'll be correlated. Um, and um, so the econometricians have uh, proposed, Back Ranger himself proposed, uh, applying search methods to the residuals to try to reconstruct uh, essentially an estimate of an equilibrium model. Um, so actually, our is the, the first model when we do this model, we already is uh, considered the. Uh, so each time is now independent, we already consider the covariant structure of the time point. So you have, you have you have time dependent points. Yes, the covariant structure right. uh, changes with the time. Right? Um they're not independent? What's what's not independent? Uh, yeah, so this one, the covariant so that uh, it's this one M, that's the M time. So this one is uh, the time, and the, it's variance from it's, uh, time zero to time one. They have uh, it's a correlation zero, but one to it's a to it's a later time point. The correlation is uh, is getting it's, so so the residual gets uh, smaller and smaller. Um, so that one we can we can here, so this one we call it the uh, the covariant structure of different time points. So so, that, so do I take the, the the time points to be measured points, different time points. So difference from one to uh, m m yeah. are those measured points? Measured points, yes. Is this the typical one that you can consider in life? This test for the auto correct structure of one single time series, right? Yeah, you can, yeah. Yeah, but I think we are talking about the uh, simultaneous dependence among all those time series. So after you do, right, after you do the you have the error, right? You have the error series for each time series. Right. And probably for the error, uh, error series, you can still find some contemporary uh, uh, simultaneous dependence structure. The correlation is not zero. So this is a time series for one variable. Exactly. Yeah. Right? So if I've got multiple variables, and exactly as Quinn says, 
uh, I do these simultaneously, my uh, my residuals will be correlated. Uh, and um, but you don't you don't investigate those. Um, no, I see what, whether one have a different. So that residual that only we take care of is the genetic, so that the the variance is now can be not the explained by genetic. So otherwise, it will be captured by genetic. And why did you uh, why did you take Kiwi form for the mean curve? Um, uh, yeah, that's one. It's the kind of meaning. It's the it's constrained by the date point we have, and also that uh, that the initial is kind of uh, so. There's a lot of uh, definitely a lot of this response curve we can now capture by linear, and some of this one you can now by quadratic curve. So it has to be higher than quadratic. And the data point is now support uh, is higher than anything than Chile. Okay, that's a good reason. <laughs> so yeah, so there are even, uh, this one is on some is the is the, is the sample that is the how they that is changed. And um, I'll keep asking questions so someone. Yeah. Can <laughs> so you. Gave this example of rather large graphs. Uh -huh. uh, what kind of dimensionality on the number of variables uh, issues, if any, do you have? So generally, if I gave you twenty thousand genes, could uh, you go to work on? Um, no, actually, there's a two. It's a constraint. Definitely, is computation is the exponential. So. Is one we generally the work is around is a it's a nine thousand eight thousand nine thousand or or it's a ten thousand range so we never go beyond that and one is the go beyond the ten thousand then computation the the increase from one day to eighty days even though it's eighty times then it's still is a it's unaffordable. And uh, the other one is really a biological system. So even though human encode is uh, is uh, twenty thousand gene, maybe higher, but in the specific uh, is the tissue only part of them is pressed. So for liver, it's actually it's higher number of genes. It's still about twelve thousand gene actually is pressed. In muscle, so it's a lot lot less. So we, for any biological system, we only is capture if that. It, Gene is stressed and also have variant among the population. So actually, it's end up it, it's about uh, it's the eight thousand range. Is is that a reason? I have to interrupt uh, this. Uh, yeah. Because uh, he has a one thirty clock at uh, traffic of car picking around at one thirty, so he doesn't. Yeah, he's got time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what. Yeah, so um you you don't use SNP data. We we do use the SNP data. I see. Wrong again, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so there are lots of SNPs. You you restrict the uh, the set of SNPs you look at by on biological grounds or how? Yeah, well, only that system that have the only its capture C SNP. Well, that's Be what that says. Yeah, so you, you know, before you say that uh, genetics that only is the uh, encode the C SNP into our network. So here's a question for you: If you could, uh, if you could reconstruct phase nets with reasonable accuracy with a million variables, mm -hmm. do you have any use for it? Um, so, <laughs> many variables, uh, I'm not sure that they still have some, a kind of some, is the boundary that, uh, 
Um, I think it could be it's uh, twenty thousand or forty thousand because the one consider is the different layer of the regulation. Like uh, we can add uh, it's a copy number variation, SNP and the methylation and what type like. And uh, beyond that is the 10 million or million, say, is the, we capture all the millions. Need. And a lot of things, if they don't have, uh, they cannot explain some variation of the others, actually, it's, uh, it's not going to have any effect in the network. So, in one sense, uh, that one we use in Y was like 8,000 to over 10,000 or 20,000. You can include every gene there, but if you don't have a variation, they end up with a uh, in the network in the singleton. So oh, it only increased the com computation complexity, but it's not going to give and you it's a better network. And you think in almost all cases of biomedical interest, do you, uh, you know uh, what classes of these features will, will be irrelevant so you don't have to consider them before you ever look at the data? Um, yeah, that's we using some is a biological. We want to say with the genetics, the, how they is regulate transcription or methylation, how they regulate the transcription before we put them to get together. Because it's generally say, it, it would put them together is the add a lot of node and actually increase the noise. Actually, make the, it's not automatic. Uh, make the network better. Actually, always make the ne network worse unless you can is, uh, see what uh, intrinsic relationship, what the underlying is the molecular mechanism, it uh, tidies the two different types they together, and then you only is encode those parts, then you can actually enhance the network. Thank you very much. All right, just, uh, sorry, yeah. I didn't think of time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, is there any causal analysis that you feel, feel is that you don't have, it's not met, like a need that you have in biology that's not met by a causal analysis and that's like currently, like currently, but you want, what is something new that you really want to help you in your science? Um, so there's the main, is the, it's the criticism or is the actually, is the also its main challenge is the, the, the patient network cannot truly represent the biological and uh, then it will be a lot of uh, it's, it's a graph and clarity. But if there's a lot of uh, it's the missing value, is the missing knowledge, and uh, we cannot capture all. Oh, they will make a lot of assumptions to use the vision network and see steady state and the complete the observation. Actually, that the complete is the untrue. So there really is. A, it's a challenge. What's the best? Um, it's a model that is still is manageable, but can it represent the underlying is the biological regulation better? <coughs> so that's why we say that can we using is a dynamic system, but actually there's still a lot of far that we still have make a lot of lot of assumptions there. All right, six months.